Hi, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I have another review for you and it's another Holly Gibney book. Uh, well, she's actually, she's in it quite a lot. And it is The Outsider by Stephen King. So this is the fourth book by Stephen King where Holly Gibney has made an appearance, although it's the first one without uh, the supporting characters from the Bill Hodges trilogy. So no Jerome, no other Robinsons, no Brady, no um, Hodges. Um, Pete Huntley is referenced, um, and Hodges is referenced a few times, Jerome is referenced a few times. But um, really, the, the main character of this book, the star of this show, isn't really Holly, although she is, um, she grows in importance once she's introduced at about the halfway point. Um, oh, very quickly, non-spoiler review, the most you're going to get out of me in terms of spoilers, and that's uh, basically something I just said and realised was a bit of a spoiler, which is that Holly Gibney turns up halfway through. If you are reading this book because it is one of the precursors to Holly, you probably already know that she's in it. Um, the fact that I've ruined that she comes in about the halfway point um, and that she is more important as it goes on, um, apologies. So the main character in this book is a detective called Ralph Anderson. Um, Anderson is quite a bit like Hodges. Um, however, I think the thing you get from from uh, Hodges that you don't get from Anderson is he's a bit more, Hodges is a bit more kind of happy-go-lucky. He's a bit more charming. Um, and he's a bit more willing to work outside the rules to um, save lives, to get the result that he wants. So, um, whereas Anderson feels a little bit more by the book, despite the kind of inciting incident, and how he kind of doesn't follow the rules. So, what's The Outsider about? So, um, Ralph Anderson is a police detective. Um, and he is what feels like the best detective in a, a small town um, that is called Flint City. Even though it's technically a city, it's one of those places that's like, it's called a city, but it's small, you know? So Flint City um, is in Oklahoma, and um, Ralph is the, the lead detective there, the, one of the, you know, the best detective there. And he's called in on the um, rape and murder of a child of a, I think an 11 year old boy um, and it's uh, it's pretty brutal and um, King doesn't go into massive detail about what I mean he goes into detail about what's happened to the child um, but I think he spares you some of the most gory detail stuff which other writers might not have um, the the one thing that he does continually say throughout the book is people like medical examiners, um, coroners, etc. Um, say that the, the murder is the, the worst that they have seen. Um, so it's, it's, he finds a great way to tell you how awful it is without being explicit. Um, and as the parent of a young boy, I definitely do not think that I would have been comfortable with it if he had been a bit more explicit. Um, I already, uh, I found the first, I found when they were dealing a lot with the murder, um, because it kind of becomes about something else um, near the end of the first act, but once they start, when they're dealing with the original murder, um, I have to say it really, I found that quite disturbing as a parent. Um, so definitely something that I would warn you against. I, one of my friends has, has children and he asked me if I thought, uh, I thought, oh, he should read the book. And when I was at that early point, I'd said to him, or, well, you know, I have to say, this has been a difficult read for me. Um, there was no point why I wanted to stop reading it. It never got to the point of difficulty or making me uncomfortable that, uh, enough that I didn't want to read it. However... Um, I will say that of all the Stephen King books that I have read, so I've read all the Dark Tower books, I've read Carrie, and I have read um, all of the three Bill Hodges books, this was the most disturbing 
um, and not just at the start with the, the, the child stuff, um, but throughout. Um, I think that the antagonist in this book, the outsider, um, as he's referenced multiple times, um, he is the most, um, he's the creepiest and the most horror-like um, antagonist that we've seen. Whereas the Bill Hodges books are almost thrillers, all three of them. The first two are definitively like crime thrillers. And the third one, uh, King adds in that supernatural element. But really, um, it's more of a kind of a supernatural thriller than a horror. Um, but The Outsider is, I would say, part crime thriller, part horror. So where End of Watch has an element of horror, I would say that the th this book is, is a lot more horrifying, if that makes sense. So, basically, there's this horrible murder and rape of this child, and the perpetrator of this crime is um, seen, kind of, not in the act, but around the act, um, in a kind of um unequivocal way um by multiple witnesses he's a famous person in the town who's well liked um this per this person and you know has conversations with people he um is visibly shown to be covered in blood there's a lot of stuff that basically says yes this is the guy you know the 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 van which the child is abducted in is covered in his fingerprints we're basically at the point of there being um, so much evidence in favour of this man um, having raped and murdered this child um, that um, the without even kind of without doing some of the due diligence on uh, that they might have or should have done on a case like this and um, they arrest him Anderson arrests him um, uh, working with the DA who's another more of a minor character but he's quite big at the beginning so the DA and Anderson arrest this guy the the subject and then it comes out that there is also irrefutable evidence that the subject was far enough away from Flint City that he could not have committed the crime so what we come to is kind of the, the concept of the book, which is that a person can't be in two places at once. So what happened? And um, we're introduced to multiple um, really good and really interesting characters along the way. Um, so there's a lot of kind of smaller incidental characters like um, the city detective that comes from the, their local city who helps them with kind of the city stuff called Sablo. Um, apologies if I'm butchering that name. Um, it's a, a Latin surname, so I'm, uh, I'm not one that I'm particularly familiar with. Um, he's called Yoon, um, which is quite a cool first name, I have to say. Um, and then you have Howie Gold, who is the um, accused man's lawyer. Um, and he's uh, kind of a rep, I've got this reputation of being an excellent lawyer. Um, and uh, his character is really interesting as well. Um, we get a lot more time with that character than I was expecting from the beginning of the book. Um, and also we spend a lot of time with the accused man's wife and how she's kind of adapting to the situation that she, she comes into where her husband is suddenly accused of this horrifying crime that the entire town kind of hates him for. Um, so all in all, um, I think... Uh, I'm going to give kind of my verdict on this one now, um, which is that I think this is probably my favourite Holly Gibney book so far. Um, it's probably the first book I've ever read that I would say is horror, um, even though this is kind of a crime horror. I mean, if you look at even the cover, is a lot more kind of terrifying than um, the Mr. Mercedes one, which are all just kind of creepy umbrellas. Um, this kind of creepy dual figure. Um, the villain in this, again, is very, very creepy. Um, and the things that he can do um, that are outside of the natural world 
are again really creepy really interesting um and the kind of ability set that he comes to this story with um uh is really really uh creepy and kind of very horrory um so as i said todd gibney who is the reason i'm reading this book she enters the book around uh, around the halfway mark um, and you get a whole section from her POV, which is great. The Holly POV chapters in the Hodges trilogy were always good. Um, it's really interesting to get inside her head, especially because her head is such a different place to be than Anderson's, who you spend the majority of the, the book with. Um, and I really enjoyed um, Anderson's interactions with Holly because uh, she specifically says as well that there's so many ways that Anderson reminds her of Bill, but also so many ways in which Bill and Anderson are different. Um, and she kind of points those out to you as well, which is, is nice. Um, so how does Holly fare in this book? I think she's um, really well done again. Um, King manages to give her a really nuanced character. So, you know, she's not just kind of like a generic, uh, strong female lead character, you know she has she has her flaws um you know she talks about her depression she talks about her addiction to cigarettes and um, and about her obsessive compulsive urges and um, and i think that um the way she's portrayed is, is really really interesting i love the character a lot i think i can well, i've said in i think i've said in every book now that i can see absolutely why king fell in love with her and why he kind of has broadened her role to the point where now you know the next book the next full book on my list i do have uh if it bleeds which is i think it's only 100 i, I, I checked the contents page and i think it's only a 100 page short story um but um holly uh is the, as the kind of her first starring role where she's the the true lead um will be a really interesting book to read i think because of how King writes her so well, um, and I would absolutely read many, many, many bo more books with Holly. She's a much more interesting character to me than a lot of the kind of crime thriller detective the characters that you see in books. You know, she's more interesting than like a... I don't know, she's more like um, Monk from the TV show Monk, almost. Um, I mean, he's like a germaphobe, and Holly is not so much that, although I think she is you know, clean and what have you, but she's she's a really interesting character, um, and uh, I just really like her, I like spending time with her, I like spending time inside her head, but also I like seeing how other characters react to her, because she's so interesting. Um, one of the best things about this book, um, that isn't Holly and isn't Addison, who are both great characters, is um, something that you started to get in End of Watch, uh, which is the juxtaposition of this very normal world with the supernatural. Um, and I really like that the um, the supernatural elements in this are almost part of the natural world, if that makes sense. And I like that King doesn't explain everything. And so, I mean, I guess you could consider that a very mild spoiler, but that he doesn't, you know, say this is what this is, this is how he came to be, this is, you know, we don't get a lot of that, um, um, which is a really, really cool way to tell the story. So, um, as I said, I think that this is the best Holly book so far. Um, I'm really excited to get to Holly, because not only have people been explicitly telling me that that book is great, um, but like I said, I just want to spend more time with Holly, I want to get inside her head. Um, and I think it'll be a great book, um, just because of how much I've enjoyed the, all of her POV chapters. Um, if It Bleeds also, um, I have found out how Ralph Anderson in again, and Anderson was great, and I'd like to, you know, the relationship between Anderson and Holly um, is, a really good, is a really good one. Um, they cement that kind of, um, in the, the latter half of the book, their, their friendship is, is um, grows and it is really strong, it's really well done. Um, so, uh, I think we're at the end of the video now, really. And um, this one was an interesting one to rate 
because um, I instinctively clicked five stars when I finished the book and I went on to Goodreads. I instinctively clicked five. And then I thought to myself, if I'm reserving five stars for a book that I think is pretty much not perfect, but is pretty much as close to perfect as you can get, and that is, you know, super well written. Um, and then I downgraded it to a four. And I, because I thought to myself, mm, is this five star material? But I, uh, I have to say, I think I may end up upgrading it again to a five. Thinking about it and talking about it now, um, I think I enjoyed it more. Although the, the thing that I would say is when I finished the book, I just kind of felt like I had just finished it. Like it, well, I didn't feel like I finished a, a kind of a big story like I often do with books. And I didn't get that kind of feeling of satisfaction. Everything wraps up very satisfyingly, but I think there's just kind of an ineffable kind of um, hit of adrenaline almost that you get. I get when I finish a book that I didn't get here. Um, so maybe in the end that will knock it down and keep it down at that four. Um, but I'll probably reconsider all the ratings once I've read all the books. Um, and I'm going to do like a wrap up video that is like best Holly Gibney books or something like that. Um, so watch this space. Have you uh, read The Outsider or have you watched the HBO TV adaptation? Um, so I watched the trailer for the HBO TV adaptation while I was a little way into the book and was fairly confident it wouldn't spoil me on uh, anything. Um, and I have to say, it looked a lot more horror-y than the book was. <laughs> while the book was had a lot of horror to it, and I, I wouldn't say that it's kind of a crime book with horror elements like End of Watch, I would say that it is like a horror crime thriller, like it's one of the main genres that I would ascribe to it. Um, the trailer was quite uh, scary and was edited like it was pure horror, not kind of crime horror, crime slash horror, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if I'm going to watch that show because it looks like it might be a bit too scary for me. I'm not, I'm a bit of a big baby when it comes to horror stuff. Um, although I seem to be fine with books that, you know, I find them more disturbing than horror than like scary if that makes sense um so yeah i'm not gonna watch the tv show um unlike mr mercedes where i watched the first episode i think the outsider might just be one step beyond where i'm comfortable watching in terms of horror -y stuff although um if you have watched the show please do comment below and tell me what you thought about it um if you um like this video then please give it a like if you have friends that you want to try and convince to read this book, then please share it with them. Um, you can tell them I thought it was a five-star book, uh, if you like. Um, and uh, if you didn't like this video and you'd like to give me some constructive criticism, I'm always open for that. Pop something in the comments. Let's have a chat in the comments about the book anyway, even if you have no criticism or you have nothing, um, you know, like... What, what's that? If, if you just want to add this book to your TBR and tell me you, you're going to read it soon, then pop something in the comments so that you'll remember to come back and we can have a chat when you've read it. Um, I pretty much replied to every single comment. I don't think I've actually missed one yet. So um, if you do leave a comment on this video, even if it's a few months down the line, uh, you'll probably still get a chat back from me. So um, thanks for watching this one all the way through. Um, I hope you enjoy The Outsider if you decide to read it. I certainly did. And I will see you tomorrow for End of Watch. Not End of Watch, if it bleeds. Um, I decided that... Um, I know normally, by the way, I post a non-kind of current reading related book. Like Usually it'll be like a tag or a top ten list or something like that. Um, but I decided that my Kindle Oasis review on Monday kind of sufficed as my Tuesday video for this week. The kind of off-the-books video. Um, so I um, just decided to throw this review straight in and I literally just finished this review at 11 o'clock this evening and it's now half past 11 as I finished filming this and I'm hoping to get this edited and out by midnight um, so we'll see if that comes through thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you guys soon goodbye